Hi guys, welcome to my video and my YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about the new red model I've been working on in Blender. We will be talking about the new tentacle ability and I will talk about infected enemies and the infection in general. So I will dig into the lore and the story of this game and I talk a little about what it's all about. This is spoiler territory guys. So if you don't want to know anything about the story in this game, then uh, you shouldn't watch this video, all right? So sit back, grab a cup of coffee and some popcorn, and I will tell you the story about what went down in this little town. This is the old rat we know from, from all the other videos I've made. Uh, and I think he looks pretty cool. I was super excited when, when I modeled this guy and got him into the game. Uh, instead of those skeletons, you know, in the beginning, uh, the enemies were skeletons. And actually before that, they were just a clone of uh, the main character. But anyways, he's a rat now and he looks super awesome, but he still kind of looks like a human uh, with some with a red head and some red features, right? So I took the existing model into Blender and just started sculpting on top of that. Uh, and the, the idea is to, to make the rat look a lot more like a real rat, you know, with those, uh, with that fat body and fat legs going into these small feet, like, like the, the, you know, the, the body and the knee kind of goes into one. You can, you can only see the legs from below the knee, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, just in general to make him look more like a real rat, you know, kind of like uh, the rat in uh, Ratatouille. Uh, which is just a real rat standing on two legs and then they made him a bit cartoony of course but but I kind of wanted to do the same and, and make him uh, a, a little more nasty and he looks a lot more like a rat now than a human with rat features uh, I still need to do some stuff uh, with his face and I want a bigger mouth and, and things like that uh, and the hands are fucked but and, and all, all that doesn't matter he have a much more rat like shape right now and i think it looks awesome in the game And instead of these uh, red glowing eyes, I just made a big black ball as an eye because I think that looks pretty creepy. Okay, so before we talk about all the other stuff, we need to talk about uh, the story in this game because it kind of ties into to the rest of the topics I want to talk about in this video. I don't have all the details right now, but let's talk about what I have, right? So Gorm and his companion Oink the pig are on these adventures. He, he like he's an old hero and he just he's not doing hero stuff anymore. He just want to kind of uh, do his own thing, you know, walk the world, get some fresh air, uh, you know, see the land and all that at his own pace, right? The problem is that he is always getting uh, dragged into all these uh, situations and problems where he kind of uh, is forced to help out um, the, the, the people around him. The game will start out with uh, Gorm and Oink being chased by this uh, mysterious thing that we, we can't really see what it is, but I will do some <laughs> cool uh, cutscene and editing where they're kind of running for their lives. Or Gorm is running for his life because, you know, Oink the pig is a magical pig that can teleport and can run super fast and it will never get tired. So, so <laughs> uh, Gorm is running for his life and uh, the pig is just following him. At some point he will reach the end of a cliff and uh, he will jump out. 
you know, it's it's either he stay and die, or he will jump and take the chance. So he jumps, and the pig is just teleporting down at the bottom, uh, at the cliff face, uh, and Gorm will, uh, you know, just hit the ground and he will die. The interesting part is that uh, he will wake up again, uh, and then when he wakes up, he will find himself in this uh, abandoned ghost town. And something has happened to this town, which makes Gorm wake up again every time he dies. So Gorm and Oink will venture further into this town, um, and at some point a portal will pop up, and uh, something will come out and snatch Oink away. Uh, you know, drag the pig into the portal, um, and Gorm, like you know, the guy he is will just uh, jump straight into the portal head first to uh, you know to get his uh, good body back and that is uh, how the game loop starts uh, Gorm will go into this dungeon and he will find uh, more and more people uh, who lives in the town and he will save them and the town will will start to to build itself back up again so for a big chunk of this game it will be you know uh, normal dungeons and enemies and you know, things we know from from you know regular fantasy games and, and worlds but the further you get into these dungeons and and the further you progress through the game the more weird stuff will start to pop up down in the dungeons which will then lead to you know the reason why this town is is cursed and and lives inside this loop so as you play and get further and further down into these dungeons you will start to see this infection which has uh, kind of spread out into the dungeons um, the further down you get and you will also start seeing enemies that has uh, gotten infected by this uh, purple goo thing that is uh, everywhere in the dungeons now you can already see where I'm going with this and I mean there's nothing new about this concept at all I've seen that many times before but it's still something uh, it's a concept that I really like right now I am experimenting with this with this infection in the dungeons this uh, purple goo thing and the way I have tried to make it in the dungeons is uh, using the exact same way as I'm spawning all these random clutter uh, which I've talked about in a previous video. I use the same system as I have used for the spider webs and for the blood uh, decal system. I use the same thing for the goo, which is just a very simple particle system that, that just spawns uh, a few particles and wherever these particles are hitting uh, the environment, it will create these uh, big goo balls. And when a goo ball is created, this goo ball will also spawn a new particle system with some more particles. Uh, and wherever these particles are hitting, I will spawn some smaller goo balls. That means I will get these uh, bigger goo balls and around those uh, balls, uh, smaller balls will kind of spawn, right? Does that make sense? So I have big balls and smaller balls around them. So when I put this uh, goo ball system into the procedural clutter system, that just means that uh, these uh, goo balls will spawn throughout the whole level. I will set a percentage chance for a goo ball system to spawn, so it won't be uh, on, the, on the whole level, right? So it, it will come around in clusters just like the barrels and the chains and all that. Sometimes it's, it looks super awesome and other times it looks uh, not so awesome, but it's a system I will improve with time, right? And the idea is that these, uh, this infection will only spawn uh, around infected rats, just like the spider webs are only spawning around spiders. But for now it just spawns throughout the whole dungeon. This of course means that the enemies that are around the infected area will also get infected with this uh, disease whatever it is i mean it's space squids and its tentacles let's not fool ourselves right 
when an enemy is infected, um, I will spawn these purple goo blobs uh, around, everywhere uh, on the enemy. I've made a system so that the, the, the goo blobs will uh, spawn like procedurally on the enemy. So it, it's not the same every time you see an enemy that is infected. It will have infection on different parts of the body. This also means that the enemy will do different things. I've already experimented with it on the spider, like I talked about in the last video, uh, when the spiders are shooting out these uh, purple goo balls, right? Uh, that is supposed to be an infected spider, which uh, and it's an ability that only the infected spiders can use. Some spiders will also have these uh, tentacles uh, coming out of its mouth and they will be able to use those as uh, attacks later on. That is also part of the infection. But for now I have only uh, worked with the infection on the rat enemies. So there's a, a, a percentage chance that a rat will spawn with an infection. And for now it just means that uh, an infected rat will have twice as many hit points. That's the only difference right now. But uh, I, I will I will expand it as I talked about before. All right. I made a small concept animation at some point um, showing uh, this uh, squid monster which is uh, the, the cause of the infection and uh, how it pops out of an infected rat and I can't wait to play with this idea that uh, these uh, squids are taking over enemies and, and making the enemies uh, do some freaky stuff and have these uh, squid monsters pop out of the enemies uh, at random. That would be a, a, a nice surprise uh, for the player, I think. And these uh, squids are endgame stuff, right? So they will get bigger and more uh, nasty and complicated the further you get into the game. But for now, I've only made this uh, concept animation and, and <laughs> I mean, things will change, of course, down the road, but uh, there you have it. And of course, uh, Gorm will be able to find, uh, you know, in infection related glove. So right now I just call it the Cosmos glove. I haven't made it yet, but I've made this first ability, which is that you can summon a tentacle uh, from the ground that will hurt the enemies. So right now it's just one tentacle that spawns. Uh, but I'm still trying to figure out wh what I want to do with the upgrading system for this tentacle ability. If I just want more tentacles, or if I just want a stronger tentacle, and, and how will they spawn? Uh, you know, things like that I'm working on, but it, I think it's a super fun ability, and, 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 and I, <laughs> I'm looking forward to, uh, to work on this again. This glove will, of course, have uh, other goo and uh, in infection related uh, abilities but i will get into that uh, w when we get there there's something about tentacles that i just like i think they're awesome so i always wanted to make a tentacle ability and uh, if you saw the last video i had a lot of problems with creating a damage over time uh, in my game so this tentacle and the this damage over time was a perfect combination for, for me to start working on, on a proper damage over time system. I, th I think it works now. I mean, I have had no examples of where it doesn't work, so I'm crossing my fingers that, that this is the system to, uh, to do. That is uh, all I have for you this time. I hope you enjoyed the little uh, insight into the lore of the game and, and the new tentacle monster enemies. Thank you very much for watching and take good care of yourself and see you next time.